Check one, two. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Woo! And we're back at it. All right. Whew. Thank you to everybody. To Pat and Libby and Evelyn and Beth and Betty and Lynn. Up, oh, hey, I heard myself. Um, and Mary and Carl, everybody who's uh, helping me out. Um, but yeah, good morning to all of you. Good morning to Miss Jane, to Carl, to Kelly and Kelly, to Miss Marilyn, Miss Glenda, uh, all of those sound technicians who are keeping me honest, helping me out. Um, Scott and Paige and Shirley are here. Good morning. Uh, Linda Halford, good morning. Hey, we got sound now. We're in, uh, in good shape now. All right, good stuff. Well, uh, it's so good to see you. Welcome now that we got everything figured out. We're still new at this. We've been doing this for, uh, according to my calculations, 15 weeks now. And we're still figuring it out. So uh, thanks for being here. It's so good to see you. I have a few announcements to start us off this morning. Of course, uh, we have our daily prayer service every weekday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on Facebook Live. So please um, uh, make some time. It's just usually about 30 minutes. Um, set some time aside to join with your community in prayer. Um, and we're so thankful uh, uh, that we are able to continue to unite and be together um, virtually. Check, check. How's this? Can you hear me again? All right. We'll make this work. <laughs> ah. All right. Um, as I was saying, daily prayer, 10 o'clock. Please make sure and check in. It's a lot of fun. It's a good time together. Uh, and of course, we have our Bible study, uh, which is Wednesdays at uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, we are studying the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans. So please interested in joining our Bible study, reach out to me, reach out to Larry. We'll get you hooked up. We're meeting virtually right now. Um, uh, and of course, we're so very excited. Do not forget, I need you to do this. As soon as worship is over, there is a link in the description. And that link will take you into our meeting room for Sunday school. So please, uh, as soon as uh, uh, this worship service is over. Just hit that link, and you'll go right into uh, Bible study or to our, our Sunday school. Beth Julian will be leading us with our lesson again. Um, it's just so good to um, have discussion and to participate in things the way we would in Sunday school. It can't be the same, but uh, we're trying our best to approximate that. And so, uh, as soon as worship's over, hit that link. Go on to Sunday school. Um, let's see. I see some new ones. Um, Stacy Craig says, Steve finally tested negative. Amen. That is so exciting. I'm so happy for you and for Steve. Um, good morning to both of you. Uh, let's see. Molly and Albert are here. Good morning. Um, Miss Betty Puckett has a prayer request. Please pray for her friend Michelle in a hospital awaiting the results of a biopsy. We will absolutely pray for Michelle. Thank you very much for that. Um, let's see, Anita Rogers is here, John and Joanne Cox are here, good morning, Miss Joyce Shepherd is here, Adrian Walters is here, good morning to all of you, it is so good to see you, um, and then I have another, one more announcement, and that is that, uh, of course, we have a target date to open back our sanctuary so we can worship in person. Now, of course, we'll have to, it is possible that the world could go crazy and the virus does weird things and, and we would not be able to make that date. But as of now, we are on schedule. We don't anticipate changing it. Um, that, that our first day back here in, in uh, person in the sanctuary will be Sunday, July the 19th. So mark your calendar, Sunday, July 19th. We are so very excited for that. Um, and now uh, we have one more announcement. Uh, before we get on with our worship service, but I'm not going to give it. I'm going to turn it over to Elder Larry Bryant, who is going to give an announcement from the session.
Good morning, everyone. This is Larry <laughs> stepping out from behind the camera this, this week to uh, share a special announcement. First, I want to kind of take us back a little bit. And church, I want you to think, who would have thought that at the beginning of this year that we would be confined to our homes and left to worship and be the church from a distance? Going on now for more than three months. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that when our beloved Pastor Jim retired, that we would be looking for his replacement for more than two years. And yet, here we are. And we continue to be the church despite all these obstacles that are trying to keep us from doing what we are called to do in this community called Olive Branch. Some of you may not even know that we've been searching for a pastor. Because every week, Pastor Paul delivers messages that challenge and encourage us. But you've just been watching services that, online. You know, just as we have learned, that Pastor Paul is a wonderful asset to our church. Through his daily Facebook services, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday devotions, sandwiched by Monday prayer list day and Friday singing day, and Wednesday night Bible study, Pastor Paul has found ways to keep our church together even though we must remain physically apart. And it is with great honor that I formally announce that our session has issued a call to our former associate pastor, Reverend Paul Earhart Brown, and he has accepted to the offer to become the pastor of First Cumberland Presbyterian Church of Olive Branch, effective July 1st, 2020. You know, we're making this initial announcement in worship today, but we will be following up with notifications in our newsletter, our FCPC Connect email, our calling post, church website, our Facebook page, and we've asked our elders to reach out to their flocks. And let me ask you, if you don't hear from one of them, feel free to give me a call. We're making this initial announcement. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I can't leave without offering our gratitude to the members of our pastor search team. My wife, Kara, Harold Gossett, Ramona Martin, Mr. Kelly Shepard, Charlie Trapp, and of course, Dick Cunningham, who had to roll off due to health issues. When this process began over two years ago, they had no idea that it would draw out this long. But we're grateful for their tireless efforts, their many meetings, interviews, and of course, their valued discernment. Your session and your church thank you and are grateful for your dedication, Pastor Search Committee. Now, church, I ask you to join me in welcoming Reverend Paul Earhart Brown as the new pastor of our church. Since we're not able to physically or personally thank Paul while ex exiting the sanctuary today, I encourage you to give him words of encouragement, either in the online chat or by sending him a note that we can show him our support. Congratulations, Pastor Paul. <laughs> You're stuck with me now. You can't get rid of me. Um, thank you very much, Larry, and thank you, uh, all the elders on the session, and especially, like Larry said, especially all those who served on the search committee who uh, went through hell and back um, over the last, better part of the last three years. Um, I'm so thankful to uh, Ramona, who served as the chair, uh, Mr. Kelly Shepard, who also served as the chair of the committee, uh, Harold, Charlie, Kara, Dick, all of you. Um, I'm so thankful that you have trusted me and are um, believing in me to um, be uh, what God wants in this place and in this community and in this people. And I'm so um, thankful for uh, this family. I'm, um, uh, I've, I mentioned uh, it feels like uh, things aren't really changing that much because kind of they're not, you know. Uh, we have been a family and we have 
uh, loved one another and shown support for one another. And um, as far as that goes, that's not changing. Um, uh, but I'm so excited for the new things that God has in store for this community, uh, for this congregation, uh, for me, uh, and for all of us working together to uh, journey toward the kingdom of God. So um, thank you, Larry. Uh, thank you, elders. Thank you, search committee. Um, and I want to, if you'll allow me to be a preacher for a minute, I want to uh, say a prayer specifically over that. So um, friends, let's pray together. God, we thank you for your church, your people who you call together to worship you, to sing your praises, to reach out to the less fortunate, to take care of and support one another. We thank you for the work that you call us to do. God, this morning, I just thank you for First CP Church and Olive Branch. I thank you for these people who have welcomed me and embraced me from the moment I got here. I thank you for these people who challenged me and pushed me to become more than I even knew I was capable of being. Those who challenge the way that I live and I work and I worship you, God. I'm so thankful that because of this place, I am better than I was when I got here. God, we're so thankful that you have called all of us together into the next phase of this relationship as we journey together toward your kingdom. God, we pray for your presence with us. We know that change will come. We know that things will be hard. We know that it won't be the same for many, many reasons as it once was. But we are thankful and we trust in your presence with us that even when things change, you are still the rock, the foundation under which all things are, are, are built upon. God, we thank you for the new things that you have for us that you are calling us to. We pray for your discernment, for your peace. God, we pray for your guiding hand with us, for all the new exciting things that we're going to do together. God, we're so thankful. We love you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Now you done messed up. Now I'm yours. Um, at this time, uh, I'm going to step away for a sec. I'm going to go grab the light and carry it in. Uh, so do me a favor and take a deep breath in and let it out. Take several deep breaths in. Quiet your mind. Focus on the worship that we're about to enjoy together. Remove all distractions from your mind, from your space around you, and let us prepare our hearts to worship our God. All right, friends. Uh, I see Terry Matter is here. Good morning, Terry and Art. I see Sharo is here. Hey, Sharo. Miss Thelma Tate is here. And me the, may the force be with you as well, Miss Thelma. Allie's here. Uh, who else did I miss? Let's see. It's good to see all of you. Um, again, don't forget to put any prayer requests if you may have them. Um, and uh, don't forget to get your praises ready for our Josiah box. But now as we um, prepare to journey into our worship service together, I'm going to read a psalm that will call us to worship. 
Uh, This is Psalm 89, uh, the first four verses. So let us prepare our hearts to worship God. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Friends, will you pray with me? Almighty God, you call us to this place to be the people that you have called us to be, to worship, to learn, to grow, to change so that we can leave this place and go into your world and begin the work that you have called us to do. God, send your spirit to be in this place, in all of our places this morning. Help us to learn and to listen, help us to grow and to change, help us to be transformed and help us to go out into your world as your hands and feet. God, we are so thankful for this time and we're so thankful that you are here with us in this time. We love you, God. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, now that we've got a little bit of a late start, Uh, I would like to invite you to stand as we sing one of my favorite hymns. I'm used to roaming and talking while since I have I wear the mic. So now I'm just going to be shouting at the mic when I'm moving. All right, we're going to sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. It's a beautiful ode to joy. Um, So please uh, stand. You sing better when you stand. If, If you are able, of course, stand in body or in spirit. Uh, And we will sing to our God joyfully. Let's sing. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward. Victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Amen. Thank you very much. And you may have a seat. And as you do, uh, let us prepare to confess our sinfulness before God so that we may receive God's forgiveness. I'm very thankful to Kara Bryant, who's here, who's going to pray our prayer of confession this morning. So. I'm going to turn it over to her and we're going to pray. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sin and ask for your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved with kindness, or walked humbly with you. O oh God, hear us as we confess, confess our sins privately now. Have mercy on us, O oh God, in your loving kindness, in your great compassion. Cleanse us from our sin. Restore us to the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, hear the good news. God's love for us is bigger than our sin. We can never stop the love that God finds that that God finds us where we are and pulls us into his loving arms. Thanks be to God that we all are forgiven. Amen. Thank you very much, Kayra. All right, friends, at this time, uh, now that we have received the forgiveness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us unite ourselves together in our common belief in him as we uh, affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. Please uh, follow along, read along. The words will be on your screen. Let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we have received forgiveness. We have united ourselves in Christ's love. Now let us with joy receive the peace that Jesus gives us and let us spread it to all that we know. Uh, show signs of peace and love to those who you're worshiping with this morning and may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. All right, y'all. Go ahead and get your thumbs, get your fingers ready to put down there in the chat what exciting things you want to share with us. What do we rejoice about together? Uh, the Bible tells us to mourn with those who mourn, but also to rejoice with those who rejoice. So share your joys with us, and we can celebrate them together uh, by ringing our Josiah Box bell over here. So go ahead and put them in the chat, uh, and I can't wait to see what we get to celebrate today. And I will start off. Uh, by simply thanking God for this place and for this people and for um, your impact in my life and for uh, our continued journey that will um, change shape and will grow and will um, morph into something new and yet will always be what it has been. Um, I'm thankful to you for trusting me and for loving me. Um, and I pray that uh, God will allow me to uh, serve this congregation to the fullness of my ability um, to uh, the glory of God, and of course, um, for each and every one of you and uh, one of God's children, which is the, the purpose of our church in this world is to love and to serve and to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. So for you, for our relationship in the past, for our relationship in the future, I give thanks. All right, let's see. Uh, we've got... Some, oh gosh, Kara, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to interpret. <laughs> Are those birthdays? There's birthdays, okay. Uh, let me do birthdays real quick. 
uh, Nancy McPherson, happy birthday, Alan Cagle, Jack Shepard, uh, Kathy Broadus, Jordan Cutts, all celebrate birthdays uh, this week. Uh, so happy birthday to all of you. And uh, what is that? <laughs> Kara says, thank you, uh, Lori and Robbie Hughes, Betty Puckett, and Pam and Rusty Daniel for helping me out uh, with furniture, beds, etc. cetera, for uh, uh, the young family uh, this week in need that Kara has been working out. So thank you so much to all of, all of you um, for working hard. And again, that is the work of Christ that we are called to do to help those in need. So Larry, you got one? Oh, happy anniversary. Oh, my goodness. Brandon and Anna Leek are celebrating their anniversary this week. Congratulations on your love and your marriage and uh, to another wonderful year. What else we got? I got nothing in this chat. Y'all, this chat's too dead. Come on now. I know you're celebrating something. What was that, Larry? Yep, yep, lots of welcomes. Very thankful to all of you. Um, I agree, Paul Tilson. It is a great name for a pastor, huh? It's good to see you, Paul. All right, we'll give you another minute or so, and then um, I'm going to move into our offering. Uh, as you know, Again, like we've been saying all morning, the work of the church is to do, is to go out and to help and to serve and to love. And we are called to do that, and we can't do that without um, the continued support uh, of our congregation and our people. And we're so thankful um, that you as a church have been so, so faithful and so uh, uh, consistent in uh, your, gift, your giving, your gifts to our uh, work here, the ministry of this church. Um, so in this time, we're going to have our offering, which means I want you to go get your money ready, go get your envelope, go get everything ready for you to send it off in the mail. We are receiving our gifts and our offerings through the mail. Um, you can mail them to the church. Uh, we are so uh, thankful for all that you have continued to support us in all the many ways. Um, and so uh, just go ahead and go grab your stuff, get it ready. I'm going to play a quick little song. Um, and... If you have any more Josiah boxes, don't be afraid to show them and tell them in there, and we'll uh, deal with that when we get there. So um, let's prepare our offerings. When he told you you're not good enough, when he told you you're not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, you'll never be enough. a liar he will take your breath stop you in your steps fear he is a liar he will rob your rest steal your happiness so cast your fears in the fire cause fear is a liar let your fire fall and cast out all my fears let your fire fall your love is all I feel let your fire fall and cast out all my fears let your fire fall your love is all I feel let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. 
Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Cause fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. Because fear, he is a liar. Amen. Y'all, let's, let's say a prayer together. God, you bless us in so many ways, ways we could never understand or comprehend, and yet we are thankful. So in this time, we pray that you take these gifts that we return to you We pray that you bless them and multiply them for the glory of your kingdom, God. We pray that you bless all those who give, that they may be your hands and feet here in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm very thankful to Kara again for helping me out. And she is going to read our scripture for this morning, uh, which comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. So if you have your Bible and you want to turn along uh, to Romans chapter 8. Uh, We'll be reading the first eight verses. That's Romans 8, 1 through 8. So thank you, Kayla. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of the life has set you free in the Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for the sin he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This ends the reading of his word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's say a prayer, y'all. God, for the gift of your holy scriptures, we give you thanks. We pray in this time that you would come and be present with us wherever we are, that you would stir in us the, the imagination, the inspiration of your holy word, that you would help us to grow and be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So you all know the world we're in today, right? Uh, Crazy, unexpected, a lot of darkness. But despite this strange world we live in, especially this horrible pandemic world that we live in, believe it or not, there are moments of beauty that remind us of the beauty of humanity. And I want to begin this morning by talk about one, talking about one of those truly beautiful, amazing things that has come from this coronavirus pandemic, and that is some good news. Some of you may have heard of some good news, uh, but if you haven't, SGN, as they call it, uh, is a homemade YouTube TV news style show created by the actor John Krasinski, uh, who was in The Office and lots of other stuff, uh, and his wife, Emily Blunt. The whole point of some good news is to simply shine some light on the good things that are happening in our world, despite all of the darkness that surrounds us. 
They've done several episodes now where John Krasinski, the anchor of the news show, sitting in his desk with a shirt and tie and jacket with uh, shorts on or swimming trunks or something underneath, uh, he highlights cool stories, moving, impactful, powerful things that people have done to find unique ways to have fun during the pandemic or uh, to take care of one another. And of course, perhaps the most powerful bits of the show are the people who work hard to help others, who sacrifice to, to uh, contribute to something bigger so that we can all get through the struggles of this virus together. SGN highlighted uh, the many people who made their own masks and gowns and 3D printed face shields and sent them to hospitals and doctors and nurses and other people who need masks. In Dallas, Texas, several people started a nonprofit to serve free meals to anyone who had been furloughed from their job. Free meals. In Arkansas, teachers at one of the schools there started a parade and drove in their cars down the streets, down neighborhoods, so they could find their students and wave at them and just tell them that they care about them and they miss them. Some Good News had a high school and college graduation ceremony for those seniors who didn't get to have one. They had a giant Zoom call, and guess who showed up? Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, Jon Stewart, all kinds of cool things. They had a prom for all those students who missed theirs, who had, and they had celebrities perform on Zoom so that everyone could be there with them. They have showcased so many nurses and doctors and medical professionals as a way to thank them for their hard work. See, that's the crazy thing about humanity. Humans have this incredible God-given ability to introduce creativity and beauty and joy into situations of extreme darkness. Moments of great evil like this pandemic, offer the best opportunity for us humans to step up and show our love for one another. Seriously, if you haven't seen Some Good News yet, as soon as this video is over, well, and as soon as Sunday school is over, because the first thing you're going to do when this video is over is you're going to click on that link and you're going to go hang out in Sunday school. As soon as that's over, I need you to go to YouTube and type in the search bar Some Good News and you will find it. And yet, while there are moments of our existence that are filled with goodness, I also don't have to tell you that darkness manifests itself in new ways as well. We cannot escape the fact that we are still broken, sinful human beings. We still see shootings and violence in our streets. Ahmaud Arbery was murdered in cold blood because two white men thought it was suspicious that a black man was running through their neighborhood. Racism still exists uh, and seeks desperately to defend itself in the face of the continuing protests for racial equality and peace. And while there are so many people making masks and sending them to the people who need them the most, there are also people who insist on going to clubs and bars and beaches without masks on and huddle with lots and lots of people because they simply don't want to comply with health regulations. And as a result, COVID-19 cases are rising again in 23 states, Mississippi and Tennessee included, which means that all this progress that we've made toward resuming our society again will have to be delayed because there are selfish people who value their vacation more than sacrificing for their fellow Americans. The darkness right now is that we are pressuring our nation to open back up when really the data tells us that now is the last time to do that because some people just can't wear a mask. Humanity is a fascinating enigma, are we not? Our capacity for good is so great, and yet it is matched every day by the temptation and the tendency toward pain and suffering. We can do the right thing, but we also continue to do the wrong thing much more often. What a confounding conundrum. When we approach Paul in today's scripture reading, he's wrestling with this same conundrum himself of humanity. Just a few verses before where we picked up at the end of chapter 7, Paul is wrestling with his temptation towards sin as he exclaims, I don't understand my own actions. 
For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Paul is wrestling with this complex notion of sin and how it affects humanity. So this morning, let us also spend some time wrestling with our understanding of sin. And perhaps, like Paul, we will come to a new appreciation for the salvation that is offered to us in Christ Jesus. First off, we need to understand two specific terms that Paul uses very frequently in his letters, but especially here in our passage. Verse 5 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Now, Paul often speaks about this divide between life in the flesh and in the spirit, and he does so with a very particular phrase. In Greek, the phrase that is translated as according to the flesh is the phrase kata sarka. Everybody say kata sarka. The Greek phrase that is translated as according to the spirit is the phrase kata numa. Everybody say kata numa. Kata means of or by or according to, and sarka, sarks is the word for flesh. Pneuma is the beautiful, famous Greek word for spirit, breath, wind, katasarka, katanuma. For Paul, life in the flesh and life in the spirit are all really about time. And this is a strange notion, but stick with me here. By that, I mean, for Paul, all of human history can be divided into two ages, marked by one event, the most important event, in the history of humanity, what do you think that is? Exactly. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. For Paul, everything changed because of Jesus, such that the world would never be the same. And the way he saw things changing is that we all now have a choice about how we live our lives. We can either live the way we lived before Jesus when we didn't fully understand God or who God was or what God was trying to do here on earth, or we can live the way we are invited to live after Jesus. Kata sarka in the, in the flesh. Kata numa in the spirit. We're invited to live a life. I'm going to pause right here because this is ridiculous. Chloe Jenkins is calling me. Chloe, you know what time it is. I'm not going to answer it, but I think this is funny. You should be watching on Facebook Live, Chloe. So uh, there's my public shaming for the day. Anyway, Chloe Jenkins, goodness, love you, but watch church. Um, you see, we, we, we don't really understand this phrase according to the flesh, kata sarka, the way Paul does. See, Paul sees this as an issue of time, like I said. It's about the way we lived before Jesus or the way we live after Jesus. Life according to the flesh is the way we used to live. But life according to the Spirit is the way we can now live because of Jesus. So when he accuses some people of living according to the flesh, he's accusing them of living their old life. He's saying this is the way we were before Jesus, so stop it. Stop living like that. Why are you still acting this way? And now we come back to the notion that I want to talk about, which is sin. And here is the key distinction for us today. The difference between living kata sarka and kata numa is not a difference of sin. It's not as if life in the flesh is sinful and life in the spirit does not have sin. No, it's ridiculous. Life is imbued with sin. To be human is to be sinful. So, uh, I mean, Paul himself just continually, uh, or just complained that he continually does the evil that he hates, and he cannot do the good he wants to do. So if we have a proper understanding of life in the Spirit as opposed to life in the flesh, I think we need to start with this thing called sin, this condition that plagues all of us, and maybe that will help us better understand the life that we are invited to live in the Spirit. Unfortunately, and if you know me by now, you won't be surprised to hear this at all, but I think the church has a pretty shallow, rotten understanding of what sin is. So in order to, to reclaim our life in the Spirit, let's try and understand what sin is. 
One of the negative effects that American Christianity has had on our theology is an over-individualizing of all things spiritual. We take cosmic, interpersonal, collective things, and we turn them into the individual. We make them just about me or about you. It's just me. And so, which means that we have turned sin into something personal. It's just about me, my sins. Don't you worry about my sins. First, Paul, sin is not something that just affects an individual. It's something cosmic. Sin is a great cloud that hangs over all of us that we cannot escape. Sin is a condition within us that prevents us from doing the right thing. Sin is the tendency that we all have towards self-destruction and self-loathing. In the Bible, sin is not individual. Sin is corporate. Sin involves all of creation. However, let me show you how I know that we don't think about sin rightly. The church today doesn't think about sin. We think about sins. I'm going to say that again. We don't think about sin. We think about sins. And here's what that means. We talk about sins, plural, as if the real issue is not a human condition, but a physical action that we specifically take. We condense sin down to a list of bad activities. And each time we do one of them, we say, oh, I sinned. That was a sin. As if sin is something small and local and individual. As if we're not sinning, if we're not doing a list, something on that list of bad things. And then presumably we're doing great. If we're not lying or cheating or stealing, then we're not sinful in that moment. As if we go back and forth between being sinful and not being sinful. The problem is that that understanding of sin is entirely too individualistic. It only concerns me and whether or not I have sinned recently. But you see, that's not Paul's understanding of it at all. Paul doesn't think we sin when we do bad things. Paul thinks that we are inherently sinful and that causes us to do bad things. It's a small but very important distinction. So that's why life in Jesus Christ or life in the Spirit, katanuma, doesn't mean that we don't sin anymore because sinfulness is a part of humanness. We sin because we are human, not because we are lost. As if knowing Jesus means you don't sin anymore. So then if sin isn't the difference, then what is the difference between life katasarka and life katanuma? And this brings us back to what we started with this morning, some good news. The goodness that we continue to inject into life and into humanity every day. Some good news and many other shows and videos have shown us, they've proven to us that in these trying times, humanity is at its best. When we see one another suffering, when we find a need in our community, We have the power to rise to the occasion and do the right thing. And how do you think we have that power to do the right thing? Do such great good in the face of such evil. That's right. The Holy Spirit. Choosing to live our lives katanuma doesn't mean that we don't sin anymore. Because we will always be drenched in sinfulness. That's what it means to be human. But living life katanuma does allow us to bring light into the darkness. Life katanuma empowers us by the Holy Spirit to speak joy and beauty and love and harmony instead of anger and hatred. But the hard truth is, ultimately, our life is our choice. We can choose to live katasarka if we want. We can choose to live the life we would have lived before Jesus. We can choose to hold grudges. We can choose to be angry. We can choose to be fearful. We can choose to be violent toward one another. We can choose to use dehumanizing speech with one another on social media. We can choose to lie and steal and cheat. We can choose to be greedy and take from others. We can choose to look the other way when we see someone in need. We can choose death. 
Paul tells us that a mind that is focused on these things is hostile to God. We cannot please God when we behave in this way because we prove that we are still living in the old age, the age of the flesh. We are still living kata, sarka. Or we can choose to live life in the Spirit. We can choose life and peace. We can choose forgiveness. We can choose racial reconciliation. We can choose radical welcomeness, radical hospitality. We can choose fellowship with one another, even though one of us voted Republican and the other one voted Democrat. We can choose to affirm the humanity of one another instead of denying it. We can choose to live katanuma. Our sinfulness does not mean there is not good within us. Remember God's words at the very beginning of creation. It is good. It is very good. God created us to be good. And though our sin may distort the image of God within us, it cannot take it from us. Life in the Spirit, life kata numa, is what gives us the power to bring goodness into the world, to be the good news that we are called to be. So friends, let us commit ourselves to life kata numa. Let us believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, but let us not stop there. Let us actually let that belief be reflected in our actions. Let us prove to the world that we believe. Not just believe in our minds. I have some good news for you, church. The world is waiting for your good news. And God has been waiting for us to continue this relationship as pastor and congregation in new ways. And I am so thankful to embark on this journey with you that will be very much the same and yet very different. We will journey together into whatever God has for us. And I'm excited to begin living katanuma with you. So let us live life in the spirit. Let us put away our life according to the flesh. Let us breathe in the newness of God, the grace and the mercy of our Savior, and the fire of the Holy Spirit. I love you all more than you know. Amen. We got fear songs that we're singing today. Uh, As we close, I want to invite you to stand. And we'll sing, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Fear is a liar. and We're no longer slaves to fear. Let us rebuke that which seeks to divide us and paralyze us, the ways of the flesh, and let us run toward life in the Spirit together. unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb you have chosen me Love has called my name 
I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. So I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could drown in perfect love you rescue me and I will stand and sing I am a child of God cause I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Amen. All right, y'all. I saw a... A celebration from Miss Terry Matter that I missed earlier. She says she's thankful for her husband and the hard work that he does for his family. Absolutely thankful for that. That's worth a ring of the bell. I don't think I missed. I hope I got everybody after that. Um, uh, yes, Kara has reminded us that um, worship will resume in person. Um, that's our plan for now on July the 19th. Uh, and I was also reminded, thank you, Charlie Trapp, um, that just because we'll be back here in person, that does not mean that we're stopping our live stream. We will continue to live stream. So even if you aren't able to make it here, even if you're uh, worried about the virus, which is totally okay and understandable, stay home and continue to worship with us this way. Um, we will continue pushing out this live service every Sunday, uh, hope, hopefully from now until Jesus comes back. That's our new plan is to, is to let this be a part of our um, presence in the community. So uh, we will continue live streaming. We will continue uh, our daily prayer videos as well. Um, every day, every weekday after we come back in person, we will still be praying together. Um, it's important for God's people to pray together. Um, so yeah, so things will change and yet things will stay the same. So uh, mark your calendar, July the 19th. Um, and mark your calendar for five minutes from now. Um, because that's when you will be joining our Sunday school class. So uh, just click on that link in the description as soon as this video is over, and you'll be taken to our meeting room, and Miss Beth Julian will take care of us. Um, so I look forward to seeing you all there. Um, I love you so much. I'm so thankful for you. I can't put into words um, what you and this place and this community mean to me, um, and I'm excited to see what God has for us next. Um, friends, uh, as we leave this time together, please receive your benediction. As you go about your week this week, let love be genuine. Return no person evil for evil, but hold fast to all that is good. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak. Give to all those in need. Show only love and compassion to all people. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit go with us all now and forevermore. Amen. In every song and hymn of praise, in every verse of adoration that we raise, Lord, receive the music that we bring. Accept our praise, our offering. In every pain, we do.
Every song. 